Hello, I'm Alex Mansfield, the host of Manny Talk Shooting, and welcome to another episode. This is the shooting podcast where I talk to individuals all across the shooting industry. We'll talk competition, self-defense, concealed carry. If you like this content, check out our YouTube channel, Manny Talk Shooting. And without further ado, let's get to this episode. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to another installment of Manny Talk Shooting, the shooting podcast that I enjoy to put on the internet for myself and for you to enjoy as well. So check it out. Thank you. I appreciate it. Comes out every Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but we got to talk about the title sponsor of the podcast, Go Fast, Don't Suck. They make my awesome banners behind me, if I remember which side I've got to point to now since I changed where I'm sitting. Usually it didn't matter because I could go on either side. But now that I'm off to one side, it's over there. But anyway, go check them out. They make awesome uh, match jerseys as well. Uh, if you haven't seen me recently, I've been sporting my new Team FML shirt. Uh, it's fantabulous. Uh, Bill and his team do a phenomenal job on making jerseys. So, uh, And dry fire decals. If you need dry fire decals, hit them up too. Uh, they're, they're freaking fantastic. So uh, check them out. Without further ado, we will get to the main topic of the discussion tonight. I'm sitting down with my buddy, Doug Lawson. Doug, how you doing today, sir? Doing good, man. How about you? Doing fantastic on this Wednesday night in the middle of sep- beginning of September. I can't really complain. Uh, it's finally not as warm as it was last week, so I can't complain. Still hot down here. Yeah, that's a uh, choice because you live there. <laughs> ah. That's all good. I mean, it, it could, but you get to shoot through the, the whole year, so I, I can't come. I, I wish I could do that. We, we don't get that lucky. Yeah. So, so Doug, for people who don't know you, um, who are you and how did you get into shooting? Uh, well, my name is Doug Lawson. I've been shooting since about 2018, um, competitively, uh, got my of course I had a BB gun growing up, but I got my first actual gun, which was a 20 gauge shotgun from my stepfather when I was maybe 11, 12 and went on a dove hunt. And during high school and everything, I didn't really get into guns until after I got, married and you know out of the car scene and i started watching shooting usa and thanks to the late great jim scouton that's how i got into shooting and i've been shooting since 2018 it's pretty impressive now you said you got that 20 gauge from your stepdad about 11 or 12 and you went dove hunting what did you enjoy about dove hunting oh it's just dove hunting is just fun i haven't been in a while um working working jobs and having a family takes precedence over other things but it's just fun because it's a little different from you know deer hunting deer hunting you got to sit and you got to wait the doves normally they like to fly especially around this time of the day getting towards the dusk is the best time to go hunt for them Mm -hmm. yeah it's got to be cool i have i don't know if i've i know of probably a few people who, who dove hunt pretty regularly but it's not as common as other forms of hunting up here so yeah, um, that's pretty cool. Now, um, so you said Jim Scouting kind of got you into shooting. Um, what made you find um, Shooting USA in the first place? I was just scrolling through um, TV one night on a Wednesday night, and at 9 o'clock at Shooting USA, I was like, what is this? And I started watching it. I think they were doing, I think it was a three-gun. I think it was the Fort Bidding three-guns, what was going on that, that episode. And I was like, oh, that looks interesting. And, Got into it, watched a few more episodes, and saw USPSA and saw IDPA, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't think uh, IDPA may not be for me, but USPSA looks like a lot of fun. Let, let, let's let's get some more info on this, and let's see if we can't do this." So, um, when you first started shooting in USPSA, what division did you decide to start in? <laughs> I went classic. Uh, I was young. I was twenty. 26 was that 26 26 27 at the time um i went with a i went in, in single stack major caliber back when 45 was cheap um and i had a springfield uh range officer operator um no thrills i'd change the grips on it and put a change the fiber and put a green instead of a red and i sh- shot major and um, I thought what I knew just by watching things I didn't, I almost was decued my first match. Um, but they, the, the people at my local range, which I'm lucky to have a few close to me, um, Spartanburg, uh, which is literally about 15, 20 minutes down the street. Um, they were very good to me and helped me with my draw. And since then I've, I've been competing. Mm-hmm. Um, so how long did you, um, compete with a single stack before you swapped? divisions to anything else 
well, I did single stack for a little while, and then uh, this was about a few years later. The X5, the first gen 320 X5, was coming available, and I, I was like, man, I want to. I, I don't mind reloading, but I want to have a little bit more fun. So I decided to do limited minor with the Gen 1 X5. Um, did that for a little while, and carry optics came available, and so I put a dot on the gun, shot carry optics. And then I just I just miss shooting 1911s. It's just something about a 1911 um, an iron sights, the classic gun. It, it's it really tests you. Um, I like the game of stage. I don't mind reloading. And uh, shot single. I've been shooting single set for the longest, but um, now since limited optics is available, I'm going to be shooting limited optics from probably here for the next for a little while. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. So and what is your current um, limited optics setup? It is currently a P320 Max with a little bit of Grey Guns love in it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, um, it's kind of nice because you can actually throw the Magwell back on there like you bought it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Magwells yeah. help out a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I can still miss a giant open gun Magwell. So, I mean, it, I guess it all depends really on uh, if... Uh, <laughs> if uh, <laughs> You hit it or not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I I have a buddy. Um, we were at my first time doing South Carolina State, and he was shooting his open gun, and I was shooting carry optics. And uh, I will never forget it. It was first stage. I'd already shot it, and him and I used to game off each other. But he don't he don't shoot no more. He's uh, got a business that he runs. So he's he's too busy. But he went to do his uh, load with his big stick, and as soon as he slammed it in, the entire mag just blew and went everywhere. And so he had to change mags immediately. And I was like, yeah, I don't think I open guns for me. That's just too much of a hassle. <laughs> yeah, that that is a very rare instance of something happening. But yeah, that definitely does suck. Um, I actually have a tool to prevent that, but uh, it definitely is helpful. It's called just like all those base pads. They have like the little push pin, like the Terrans. Yeah, yep. you ignore his warranty and you just tighten it all the way down. So it'll never come off unless you take it off with the tool. <laughs> So what really made you want to shoot a SIG? Like what drew you to SIG in the first place? I've always liked SIG ever since I got into firearms. I just like the, um, the quality control and uh, original was a German, German company. And I just love the, the way the SIGs looks to me, just the lines on them and they just look really sexy. So I, I just like, like and they, they function well. I, I've never had a SIG fail. I mean, I've owned a lot of SIGs. I, I've never had a SIG fail. I go bad. Mm -hmm. Are you ever uh, worried about a um, what, like a P three the P three twenty issues lately? Have you, are you ever worried about that happening to you? No, because um, I don't reload anymore, um, and I take very good care of my firearm. I, I really think um, you know it's nothing against the guys who have brought that issue up, but to me, I I really think it's. I don't think you're keeping your gun clean and everything should, and you know, I'm, I'm a stickler even with factory ammo that I, I get from one of our local ranges here that they make reman. Um, and my buddy Tyler, um, who you had on not too long ago works there. I, I check, I chamber check every round in my, that goes into my um, range bag before match. It doesn't matter where it comes from. It gets chamber checked with the barrel and that, that's just how I do it. And I, like I said, I've owned plenty of 320s. I've never had that issue. Mm -hmm. So when you said you don't reload anymore, did you did you reload at some point? I did, and I was naive at the time. I bought a I bought a turret press, but it wasn't like the nice nice presses. It was you had to hand do everything, so it was just a pain in the butt. And then kid was born, and trying to late reload with a little one, it's um. Yeah, it's just it's just time consuming and when you work two jobs and trying to fit all that in it just just wasn't for me anymore so i got rid of my setup and now i just buy factory ammo yeah now did you reload during the pandemic or you were you buying factory at that point i was buying factory at that point okay so um did that ever hurt you in your ability to go shooting or, or not really <laughs> It, it did. Um, uh, when my uh, daughter was born, my uh, wife and I sat down and we had a discussion and uh, I limited myself to one match a month. I know it's not a lot. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you only shoot once a month. I was like, yeah, but when you when you got a full-time job and you got, you know, 
obligations at home. And uh, it's just, to me, this is a hobby. Now, if I was getting paid, you know, by a company to go out and compete, yeah, I'd be out there every weekend going. I'd be like, let's go. But, but because of the job that I had when I was where I was at before I am now, um, I, there would be sometimes we would work six, seven days a week, you know, through 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 the summer. So mm-hmm. that, so trying to fit in the match on the weekend was hard. So I'm lucky that one of the local ranges here does a does a night match on one on the third Tuesday of the month. So I was able to catch that for a little while when all that was going on. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, it's nice to have those local indoor matches every once in a while. Let you get let you go shooting, but not really a big time sink or a big commitment on the weekend. But um, so Doug, what are some of your um current goals in shooting? Current goals. Let's see. Uh, well, I used to shoot at least two big matches a year. I, I used to shoot the South Carolina State match and the North Carolina uh, State match every year, but. Now I'm just limiting myself to South Carolina. I'd like to get back to shooting at least a few more majors. I'd love to, hopefully by 2025, go to my first nationals. I'd love to go to carry out this nationals, especially if it's in Talladega. Um, I don't mind the travel, but uh, where they have it this year? Where was it? Ohio? or Yeah, Marengo, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want, I'm not a big fan of flying. Uh, <laughs> so, But I, I love, I'd love to go to a national event one day. Right, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised how close it is actually to Ohio. I mean, it's probably still of a, it's still probably a, a clip from South Carolina, but I don't think it's that much farther from South Carolina to to Talladega. That is to Talladega than it is South Carolina to uh, to Columbus. But anyway, that's no big deal. Yeah, no, and I think that's a good thing to get back into major matches, shoot nationals. I haven't shot nationals yet either, so. It's kind of one of those things I'm looking um, forward to doing at some point uh, in the relative future as well. So, um, so do you dry fire much, or is it has that taken a backseat as well? I do. Um, I mean, I, I do try to get at least um, I try to get at least thirty minutes in a day. Sometimes it's maybe fifteen, and sometimes it just depends on work. And I've got no dry fire that day. It just just depends on how the day goes, but. Uh, I'm currently dry firing without my limit optics gun. I'm actually using my Beretta PX4 Storm as a dry firing tool, just trigger control mm-hmm. and trigger discipline. And that's I've just been using it a whole lot here lately. So what is making you choose to a dry fire with your Beretta comparatively than your SIG? Well, uh, just manipulating the, you know, the trigger and just, you know, just getting used to different different things. You know, I mean, I'll pull out the limited optics gun when I want to, but it's just, you know, you got that long trigger pull and you can, you know, you can stage the single, the single action on it. Mm-hmm. it no, that makes sense. And uh, that does make sense, I guess, if you wanted to uh, mix around with something like that. But it's uh, it's an interesting take on that. That's for sure. Um what made you? Uh, I'm kind of curious now. You bring up the Beretta PX4 Storm. Um, what made you like that gun in the first place? Well, actually, that gun was gifted to me. Well, I wouldn't say gifted. Um, it was willed it to me. My uncle unfortunately passed away a few years ago, and I had to help my aunt um, go through his collection. And that was one of the ones that was um, promised to me. So I got it, and it was. I mean, the gun basically stayed in the in the case. He was a big Beretta guy. Didn't know he was a big Beretta. I knew he had some guns, but I didn't know what he had. But he had a lot of Berettas, and um, that's the one that came to me. And ever since I got, it, I've just been, you know, been shooting it. You know, it, it's just a fun gun to shoot with that rotating barrel. And I want to get a hold of um, LTT and maybe try to get some of their goodies put into it. Um, it's it's kind of fun. One of the guys um, with my part time job, I, I work at a local store here in town, and one of my customers actually knows Ernest personally. And we'll get to talking Beretta stuff and just talk about, you know, how he knows Ernest. And we'll just we'll just have a good old time chit-chatting for about 20, 30 minutes in the store. And then I'm like, hey, you know, I got to go. I got stuff I got to do. Mm-hmm. No, that's pretty cool. No, and um, yeah, you're right. Ernest does make some awesome goodies for the Beretta products. Like, I know they're finally cutting slides for the, the PX4s. So that's really kind of interesting how he's molded. He's been able to take platforms and modify them to actually fit what people's needs now are you know now 
because they never used to, you know, it was always just iron sights. So it is what it is, right? And they just, oh, no yeah. one could really change anything. So you, as you were talking a little bit earlier, you said you had to kind of cut back a lot on shooting, but, um, uh, what is your typical, um, home club? Is it Belton or is it, um, Spartanburg? Uh, well, it, it depends cause our, the, the way things are set, set up here, uh, Spartanburg does two matches, uh, uh, actually run three matches uh, during the month. It just depends on weather. The first Saturday and the third Saturday is a USPSA match, and the second Saturday is a steel challenge, and Belton does theirs on the fourth Saturday. So it just, it just depends on, one, if I'm working that weekend, and two, you know, if depending on the weather, too, because uh, a lot of the guys that I shoot with know this, and it's been this way since I've started shooting. During the months of July and August, I don't shoot. It's too hot. And normally I'm so busy with work and family life those two months. We got vacations and just a lot of stuff going on. I don't, I don't have time to shoot those two months. So I take two months off. So I try to get in a little bit more dry fire that time during those two months. Keyword in that is try. Right. There's always something that comes up, right? Yeah, you you know, no oh, yeah. one's ever truly perfect on a 100% dry fire schedule. So I totally understand that. So, um, so out of all the matches you can shoot or location-wise, uh, which is your preferred one to go to if you had to only pick – if you're stuck with only one club, which one would it be? As much as I love my local club because they're 20 minutes away, Spartanburg, I would I actually would go down to Belton down there with um, Todd and all of them. Um, Todd, Chris, Tyler, Randy, all those guys down there that and all the volunteers that put on those matches down there, they do an awesome job setting up those matches. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's really good. It's really good what they do down there. Yeah. It's about a 45 minute drive for me, but but it's worth it. Right, yeah, that's that's not awfully terrible. It's left, definitely le- definitely not as close as it could be, and it could be farther. <laughs> oh yeah. So you shot the North Carolina section. No, I'm sorry, South Carolina section match this year. Um, did you feel like you had enough time to prepare prepare for that match? Yeah, um, I actually did something very crazy. Um, I had been shooting single stack, and I've, for something for some odd reason, my ADD brain said, Doug, why don't you pull the, why don't you pull your carry optics gun now, um, limited optics gun out and shoot a dot this time instead of shooting single stack with a week before registration ends. I'm like, sure. Why not? Let's, let's just, let's just throw everything out the water we've been doing for the past year and just pull the dot gun back out. And I did, I actually went to indoor match on, on Tuesday night and make sure I could still do it. Cause you know, fundamentals going from iris to dot after so long, it'd be kind of hard. I picked it up like it was nothing. That nice big window on the dot was so good. And I went and shot. I changed my division from single stack to carry optics two days before registration. You know, everything was over with. And I went and shot carry optics. And I had so much fun. I had forgotten how much fun it was just to go out there and shoot with a dot gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I quite enjoy dot guns. I will. I'm not going to lie on that one. That those are definitely a hoot in my opinion. I don't think I'd shoot bumpy iron sights at all either. So, <laughs> but that's all good. Um, so did you do any? So other than you know picking up the gun and you know deciding to shoot a dot gun, did you did you do a bunch of dry fire prior to the match? Or I did. It... I did. I dry fired about. I, I I did as much as I could with the time I had, but because I'd also recently uh, changed jobs, I left it. I left in. An industry I'd been in for over 15 years and started a whole new job, whole new career set. And so I was, I was working a lot on um, trying to get used to that new job and trying to fit all this in uh, right around that time. And But yeah, I, I did what I could. I, I think I bumped up from 30 minutes to maybe 45, you know, probably every other day. So, Gotcha. Now, typically what in your normal dry fire session, what are you focusing on? Reloads. Mm-hmm. And um, target to target transition. Fair enough. Now, um, why is it reloads? Is it something that you struggled on from your single stack days, or was it just something you needed to get used to with the mag? It's, it, the, the it, it's something I it's something I struggle with the uh, uh, single stack days. You know, yeah, with you know with big twenty one round three twenty mags, yeah, you know, holes right there. It's holes nice big. Get to it, but single stack. Even though I got certain things on the mag well to help help the guy in, you know, it's just. I don't know. I'm still getting used to, um, you know, not having the gun up here in my workspace, but trying to look down while I'm moving. And so. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I have the old uh, I have the old Max Michelle style of shooting back in the day when he was on Hot Shots, um, where you run into a section and shoot, and then you run out. So, so shooting on the move. I've actually been working on that a lot this year when I do go go to matches. There's a lot of shooting on the move. I'm trying to pick that up and try to try to change my wheelhouse a little bit. Yeah, it definitely is a it it is a definitely a needed skill set in the sport nowadays. Uh, I was watching a post from Shane Coley earlier today. You know, he was talking about that a little bit about how shooting on the move needs to be you know an asset for most shooters nowadays because. The sports change is way more athletic than it used to be uh, in his in his mind, so that's kind of cool too. Um, so I, I want to double back, double back on the South Carolina section match. What did you think of the match in its entirety? Out of all the South Carolina state matches that has been, that is probably the best one. Todd and Tom Castro and all the guys there did a great job. Um, the vendor area that Tom – uh, set up was just awesome. Uh, I mean, you had, you had, of course you had our rivals, you know, I, I shoot for Rudy project and, you know, of course, um, you know, I'm there representing them, but, uh, Brian was there. I, I talked to Brian for a little while from Hunter's HD and, you know, I talked to the guys at masterpiece arms, yeah, but the, the, the highlight for me and the thing I love most, I made sure I had lots of extra ammo for this was the clinic that Tom was running. And I had basically about 30, maybe 40 minutes with Tom by myself of him showing me what I was doing wrong, what I could improve on. And to me, that was worth the entry fee, just getting in there and shoot that. I didn't care where I, I mean, I do care where I finished, but just going and getting that training, you know, from him technically somewhat for free was just freaking awesome. And Tom's, Tom's a real good guy. He's, he's going to tell you, hey, you know, you need to, you know, he, he's not going to, so he'll, how am I going to put this the right way without sounding like a he, He's going to tell you what you need to do, but he's not going to, you know, bullshit you either. I mean, right. Yeah. He's definitely not going to sugarcoat it for you. So that's definitely the, Tom's going to tell you how it is. <laughs> yeah, Cause uh, I grew up doing, um, doing karate and, you know, playing a little bit of baseball. So being right-handed shooter, I kind of want to lean with my right foot in front of me. And he was like, no, you need to put that right foot behind you, put your left foot in front. And ever since I've been doing that, I've been incorporating that to my dry fire and, you know, just uh, my movements. You know, sometimes I still catch myself on the range. Like, oh, I need to move my foot back. That's like, I need to change my feet because they're not set right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely, you know, proper stance is yeah, going to be super important, especially on those stand shoots or even just setting yourself up for, for good movement. Um so you enjoyed that. That was cool. Um, any stages that stick out to you in particular that you enjoyed? Um, probably, I think it was the stage I think they had to throw out. I think it was the Holy Monkey stage where I had a two alpha, double alpha, yet again. That's back-to-back years I've had double alpha on that on that Holy Monkey stage. Um, I can't remember why they threw that stage out, uh, but it had a door in it, I think, as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you had to kick down the door, and, and the, no low, I didn't have no low ports in it. It was just a fun stage, and I actually had to shoot in the rain starting out that morning. It just started pouring that morning, so I was like, great. This was a great idea, Doug. Let's shoot a optics gun you hadn't shot in over a year in the rain, <laughs> So, but the rain rain finally left that afternoon, and we finished up, So, because the way, the way they do it, the um, way um, Todd and all them set the stage up, the match up is um, you have squ- squads that shoot in the morning until about lunchtime, and then you have squads that shoot from the afternoon until when the sun starts to go down. So you're not there. You don't have to be there all day if you want to be there. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Now, what do you, have you ever shot? Well, you just talked about you. You only pretty much shoot South Carolina, North Carolina. Um, have you ever thought about going to another major match that doesn't have a staff reset? I thought about maybe going to Georgia one year. Um, it's just it's just getting with um. People, you know, I mean, I got a few guys up here that I wouldn't mind traveling with. It's just, it's like I said, it's, it's fitting in the schedule, uh, you know, if, if I can make it or not. So. Yeah. Now, do you find that staff reset is a mandatory needed thing in major matches or is it just a nicety to have? It's nice to have. I mean, if the staff are going to be there 
be there working it and, you know, doing the reset. You know, if, if you're on a squad, you should be taking these people, you know, hand, hand and foot. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, they're running out there, changing targets out, you know, pasting targets. But I I like it because it gives you as a shooter a little bit more time to kind of walk the stage or check the stage out, you know, in between shooters. You know, you're not having to go, oh, I got to go pace this target. You know, so you can kind of work on your game plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely lets you get a hold of your game plan um, fairly well. And that's it, and it almost means that you need to be more dedicated to your game plan or your stage plan because you don't have to reset. You know, you can oh, you can f- focus mentally all on your uh, your stage runs. But um so I guess I need to switch this up a little bit is uh how much of your do you think ever about the mental game or you know visualizations and whatnot? I do. Sometimes I'll psych myself out. Um, I think it was a few weekends ago. It was back in June. I was shooting, um, and I had a, I had the perfect stage plan out. I'd, I'd walked it like five times, and then I get up there to shoot, and it just goes completely out the water. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, and my buddy, and when we got done, my buddy that's um, with Rudy, who uh, lives here in, in upstate with me, he was like, "Dude, why did you go that way? I was gonna go the other way because if if you." watched that video i had to edit it because he went to go right and i went i actually went left so he had to backtrack to catch me i was like i have no idea i just got up there and my brain went click and it's just a blur <laughs> but yeah. the mental game it is something so mm-hmm. yeah and i definitely say this too in the regards is um easy ways to pick up on mental game stuff is definitely listen to anderson anderson is definitely a, a godsend when it comes to uh the mental game for the most part so that's always definitely a good one to to uh, accommodate into your uh, mental game efforts. But um, yeah, I heard good things about the South Carolina match. You know, from talking to Tom and Todd. I don't talk to Todd very much at all anymore. But Tom, I definitely you need do to talk come to. down. I, I keep telling you, you need to come down. You need to put it on your PTO sheet for next year. You need to come down. I, I mean, South Carolina will probably, hopefully, be in the works for next year since it is super early, and I don't have any other majors that early in the season the only early thing i have next year is in may so i mean it's a possibility it is a possibility but um <clears throat> mm, darn i got that damn cough again but anyway so um yep so south carolina seemed like to be a good hit uh i'm i'm hoping for another good one next year depending on if tom and todd do it again i know todd will uh from talking to tyler he said that they're looking to expand and buy they bought more property so they might add on to the bays and they might be able to actually do some cool stuff with it yeah so um you can tell it's been a long day already i got the yawnies (laughs) (laughs) so um what does the rest of your season look like at this point mainly just locals um i'll shoot i'll shoot a few more locals i'll try to shoot at the end of this month and just just try to finish out the year. Um, I've, I'm going to see. I don't know if there's any open slots left still. I'm going to hopefully can go shoot the war match, which I think is next month. It may be October. Um, it's a charity match. It's an all falling steel pro am style match, um, mm-hmm. and it goes to help raise money for fallen soldiers and um, officers here in the upstate area. Yeah, that's, that's actually excuse me all over actually all over South Carolina. And we got some guys that come to. I think. I think Tom's coming back for it. I think he's coming here for the match. I think he's going to run his PCC. I'm not too sure, but I think he is. Yeah, I, I saw think that. He came, I think he came to it last year. Yeah, I think I, I do remember that. I think I saw him, David Lyle, shoot that match. So it seems like a good match to support um, that good cause. Um, have you taken, other than taking that clinic with Tom at the South Carolina section, have you taken any instruction from any instructor in uh, practical shooting? Um, unfortunately, no. Every time I want to, there's always a conflict, either work or just just something going on. Um, and plus, you know, um, funds issue, you know, trying to say, okay, well, I can afford to do this class. If I do this, then that's going to put me, you know, back on going here, going, you know, shooting this match this month. Because mm-hmm. one of the cool things, not only do I have two clubs real close to me, uh, there's another smaller club that's actually up in the mountains. Um, they do their matches, uh, I think, also the same weekend as Belton. Um, but they're very small clubs, so not a lot of people go up there. So sometimes they may have people sign up, but they just won't have enough people, so they'll cancel the match. And then our main uh, area down in Columbia, where our, st- our, our state capital 
they do their matches the second Saturday of the month, and it's a nice place. Um, actually, speaking of them, they should have soon the Toys for Top match coming up. Uh, sign up for that. That's always that's actually probably my end of the year match. Is always the Toys for Tots match. It's always a good match. Uh, Linda and her crew down there at um, Columbia they they put on an excellent match, and it's just a fun way to end the year. I normally shoot with a lot of guys um, from uh, from North Carolina that will go down, and I'll meet up with them and we'll shoot down there with them mm-hmm. yeah it's those toys for tots match are pretty darn cool you know everyone just you know brings a toy and, and then that's your match fee I mean, it's <laughs> it can save you uh money or it can uh, cost you more than the normal match fee that's for sure um, yeah well, 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 yeah one thing i like to do with that though is um and i get my i get my daughter to help me out with it every year when we go is i get a toy for three different a ranges i get one for you know for a teenager um you know pre you know preteen or a little younger and we always get an, inf- an infant toy that way, nobody's really left out, and I, she helps me pick the toys out every year. I kind of mm-hmm. include her with it a little bit. But she she can't really go to matches because it's, you know, she just turned five. She wants to go, but I'm like, no, nah, yeah, we need to wait till you get a little bit older. That way, I ain't got to worry about you. You know, I'm, I'm trying to shoot a match, and you don't try to run onto the, run into the bay while I'm shooting. You know. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's definitely a little young on that point, but I, I do agree on your uh, safety concern on that one. So. That one's a good eye on, on you. Um, so you've, you've mentioned it a couple times during the, throughout the show, uh, Rudy Project. Um, I'm kind of curious, how did you get hooked into the Rudy Project? I got hooked into them uh, mid-2018. I, I, you know, guys I follow on Instagram, uh, one of them, he still competes a little, but he's no longer with us. Um, I, I, was, I was looking for a sponsor at the time, and I was like, I wonder if I could, I wonder what the qualifications are to be a sponsor shooter. Excuse me. Finding a sinus thing myself um, for uh, for this for Rudy Project, you know, I've done some research on them, and so I messaged them, and they said, "Well, hey, this is what you need, you know, this is your qualifications, what you need." And I was like, "Okay, I think I think I make those." So I did um, two phone interviews with them, and then uh, end of 2018, beginning of 2019, I uh, became a member of uh, Rudy Project. I've been with them since then. And since 2020, I've been the um, East uh, co-captain under my buddy uh, um, Eli uh, for the East region. Mm-hmm. So what? Uh, how many different regions are there in the U.S.? Uh, we have the East, uh, Midwest. Um, we have we actually have a lot of we actually have a lot of shooters in Canada. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, but each region has their own. Uh, of course, we have California region all you know out there. That's crazy comedy states. Uh, but uh, a lot of, depending on the region, or even if you're like in Canada, if you're on the east side of Canada, you fall in our region. You know, it, it just it just depends on where you fall. So, but the east coast we span all the way, I think, to Ohio, I think, and then I, then we have the central, and then we have the west. Gotcha. And typically, is there like a cap on how many shooters are on the team, or is it, um, or does it vary? Uh, to my knowledge, I don't know because we do have a pro team, um, but that's a whole different. That's 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 out of my wheelhouse. I don't deal with deal with the pro team. The captains and the higher ups um, on the team deal deal with the pro team. Uh, but we don't think I don't think we really have a cap. Um, it it just depends on you know. You know we're brand ambassadors. You know, we have a lot of brands we represent and we want to make sure that you're, you know, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to, you know, represent the brand in a professional manner, um, post doing our daily posts and just talk to people about our products. And if you can do those things and, you know, C class or hire a shooter, um, we, we love, we love to have you check us out. And, you know, if you want to try us, you, know, you can try us for a year. And if you say, okay, I had, I had fun, but I, I don't want to do this no more then it's okay. You know, Mm-hmm. well that's cool too um it's kind of cool how you got hooked up into that too so that's uh that's nice you're able to you're now you're a co-captain um but res- i'm curious now as the co-captain to the east uh do you have any other responsibilities on top of what you've already mentioned no not not unless um like if eli's going on vacation like he went on vacation not so long ago he's like hey i'm gonna be gone for certain amount of days i need you to keep on top of daily post make sure everybody's posting you know if anybody's got any questions you know sometimes i'll say hey you know before you contact eli contact me if i can't answer it you know i'll get you to the correct person because you know we have people that are higher up they're like hey these people shouldn't be messaging me before they message you guys because if you guys can answer the questions they need to be messaging you so you know delegating things like that 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, fair enough. That that makes sense in that regard. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. So, um, do you have any current goals um, for your shooting? With I want to make B class um, uh, in in limited optics. Uh, that's, that's what I want to do. I was hoping to shoot an all classifier match, but uh, it conflicted on uh, with um, the kid's birthday, so party. So I wasn't able to get to shoot that, unfortunately. That would have bumped me up. But um, yeah, I, I like them trying to make B class by the end of the year, and you know, maybe if I can make B, and if they actually do a limited optics national. I mean, I know they threw it in this year with um, Iron Set Nationals, and there was a big hoo ha with that, but. Uh, I was to me, I'm one of those guys. I was like, hey, you know, at least there's, you know, at least USPSA seeing, hey, you know, there's actually traction with this. We should maybe give it a shot. And I think the only reason they threw it in with iron sights because it was too late to throw it in with open and PCC. Um, but I, I mean, if I could get it to where I could hopefully maybe get a nationals next year, that'd be great. Uh, if not, you know, 20, 2025 is just around the corner. It'll be here before we know it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's already the end, pretty much the end of most people's seasons uh, in 2023. So, yeah, I can understand that as well. Um, hmm. I guess I lost what question I was going to ask you, but that's okay. I'll just keep rambling until I come up with the question. Because, as my buddy Robert Wyatt says, "Dead air is bad air." So, uh, <laughs> um, so I guess if I remember right, um, we when we started originally communicating, it was. Probably when they first talked about single action only in carry optics a couple years ago. Um, and you were one um, chirping, I guess, for that, for from one of the very beginning, if I do believe, right? Yeah, me and, uh, you know, of course, a few of the guys on Instagram, we, we all, like, we did our daily memes and things like that. You know, we're like, this, this, you know, this, this, this might get us trash, this might not. But, it, you know, not to not sound like... Uh, now, I, I don't know if I want to go there, but you know, I get a lot of people that are, I wouldn't call them trigger snobs, but they're like, they're like a single action only, you know, it has an advantage over this. And I'm like, no, it doesn't really. And maybe over your double action, but that's just your first shot. If you throw it, you know, you can pick it right back up. Cause I've seen some single, I've seen some P320s with trigger resets that are better than some 2011s. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, come on, guys. It's it's not a trigger. It's just because y'all don't want y'all didn't want certain things to play and you know play with you. Mm-hmm. But you know we we have it now, and you know I I, w- I would love to have a 2011. That's probably a goal. Hopefully one day I'll have one. Um, I don't know who. You know, Lima. I don't think Lima Cat, which is one of our sponsors, isn't making one right now. I, they mainly make open guns. So maybe I can talk to my buddy Chris and. Maybe David, since I know them real well, we shoot we shoot together. I, I try to shoot with Chris, who you had on it so long ago. I shoot with him a lot. Um, try to be on a squad with him because he, he's just fun to be around and shoot with. Uh, maybe I can put a little um, birdie in there and be like, hey, uh, you know, I, I need a limited optics gun. What, what, what can we do? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it's always you always got to squeak the wheel, right? And uh, talk to the people who know who to talk to, right? It's. Mm-hmm. that's the one thing about this community is everyone's pretty much willing to help ever, anybody out, you know, for the most part. And so that's always kind of nice in that regard. But, um, yeah, you were, t- I think what you said, you were like, even if you got a prodigy, you'd be happy with that too. It seems like at that point. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and, you know, you know, everybody was kind of like, Oh, it's a Springfield product and it can be good. And you know, the first batch, you know, let, let's be honest, any gun, First roll out, you know, first thousand, you know, or so. There's going to be problems, you know, a lot of mem parts. But, you know, I'm seeing people, you know, I've, I'm on a few of the pages. You know, I, I do a lot of stuff, you know, within the shooting community. You know, people ask questions, and I'll say, hey, you know, you want to check this out? Uh, you know, I've seen people do this, and you know, just to help them. But I've seen a lot of people take prodigies, and the money they throw into them, I add it up, and then I go online and I look, and I'm like, you could have got a staccato, or you could have got a used, you know infinity or something for after you you know our good masterpiece arms by the time you can throw all that money in so that's why i was kind of still lean away from it because i'm like if i'm gonna spend that much money on a gun and then i gotta drop that much extra into it i should as well just bought the gun i wanted from the get-go yeah 100 percent. yeah those that 
that is where people go down the rabbit hole and it never seems to work right the keep dumping money and you know it's at the end of the day it's still a glock or it's still a mmp yeah. it's still a sig um now if you were king for a day um would you change anything about limited optics Ooh. probably not because i know a lot of guys want to run their 40s and you know run want to run their 40s i mean it might be cool to have major and minor scoring in there but ugh, i don't know um i kind of i kind of a pcc hater i don't know i'm a big fan of those guys but uh that's a topic for another time uh but uh no i probably wouldn't change anything with it so mm -hmm. i'd probably leave it, long, leave it like it is i think i think it's pretty good you know you have the options to choose a regular or race holster if you want you know, it's just as long as you meet weight limit and, you know, throw the bells and whistles on it, let's, let's go have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Now, have you ever thought about um, becoming a range official? I have. Um, I, you know, of course, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not certified, but, you know, when I'm at a, you know, when I'm at my local matches, you know, I don't, I won't run the timer, but I'll, I'll run the pad all day. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we got iPads that are, Unless we're at Spartanburg and we have um, old Kindles, we still use the old Kindle there. Uh, but the, uh, I'll help with the pad and you know things like that. I, I like to get into it. It's just you know when it comes into it, it's finding the time and where is it going to be at? And okay, all right, I got to find a hotel and all that. So it's, it's it's just finding the time and you know you know being gone from the family for a weekend, you know to go to do that. Yeah, that definitely can be. Uh... That definitely can be a de uh, a deterrent for uh, being gone and shooting a bunch of matches. It seems like so. Well, and you know, figuring out how to work one, you know, not figure out how to, but you know, working a match or you know, volunteering to take an RO class. So, um, I do definitely recommend to everybody if you've got time or ones in your area and it's super close and it's reasonable and like you can stay at home, like uh, definitely do it. Um, I'm surprised that maybe even Todd could do this. Maybe he could even get one set up where it's relatively close to the section match yeah that actually um, so, would be pretty cool i actually did uh i was actually on staff you know pacing targets you know running the pad uh, at south carolina for two years back to back was it two years maybe three mm -hmm. um uh, and you know i did that and i, I like they got to meet a lot of guys uh, you know got, I got to meet phil strader one year got to meet um clean up church got to meet the guys from the army's marching unit you know you know just got to meet a few of those people and you know that's that is kind of maybe be the fun part being on staff at certain matches like that because you get to meet people because if you're shooting and you're not on squad with them well yeah you may pass them by you know walking to the next stage or something but when you're on staff you get you can sit down and you know if you got a few minutes you know they'll chit chat with you do pictures and just you know it'd be pretty cool mm -hmm. yeah that is I, I will agree that is darn pretty cool to be able to go you know chit chat with you know people and whatnot it, it, especially those big names you everyone remembers from you know the internet or social media or you know television for the most part you know because god you know it's so it's so cool to be able to look back and be like you know you can look at the people who are on top shots or hot shot um and be able to talk to them right they're you know they're just average everyday people shooting a sport with us oh, yeah. everyone, there's, yeah. there, there's so little people who are actually professionals in this sport but y'all shoot yeah, the same I match yeah, I went to um for my was it my thirtieth birthday? It was either my thirtieth birthday or my thirty second birthday. The NRA convention was in Atlanta, which ain't too far from here. And my leveling I convinced my loving wife to go battle Atlanta with me for a weekend and go to the NRA convention. And this was before I was with uh with Rudy, so I I'd, I'd been shooting for a little while and but I, you know, I went down there to the NRA convention and all I cared about was because I, I stay on top with with YouTube, you know, you know, what's coming out here and there. All I cared about was while I was there was meeting Jerry, Kay, Lena, Rob, Max. You know, I ran into Chris Serino. Uh, you know, didn't get to meet Terry, and he wasn't available. But I got to meet the guy who one day I'll have one of his 1911s was uh, was Les Bear, and he's a big car guy like me. He's a big Mustang guy, um, and we both have Mustangs. And we for about 30 minutes, him and I just talked 1911s and Mustangs, and that's all we did. And it was just so much fun just to sit and just just talk with him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah that that is definitely cool um so you've mentioned a couple times you know that you were a car guy what what when did you get into cars and why did you get out 
I got in the cars right after high school, um, 2006. Um, and I used to, I used to do a lot of car shows. It, but this is back when gas was cheap. We're talking a dollar or something a gallon. Uh, and you know, I was, I was single, living at home, working. Uh, but I would go to a car show or a cruise in almost every weekend with, with my Mustang. So she's got a lot of miles on her. Um, she's currently down right now. I got to redo the motor. Uh, but I, almost every weekend, I was I was going to car show cruising. Guys would call up and say, "Hey, we're gonna go. We're gonna just go right around, and we're gonna go hit the mountains. We're gonna go this highway. We're gonna go here. Let's do a pit stop. Do you want to go?" I'm like, yeah, where are we meeting? And go. Uh, but once I got married, and and a little one came along, you know, car and you know, a lot of stuff gets put on the back burner. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that de- that is definitely true in that regard. Everything can get put on the back burner. Um, unfortunately, you know, life life is as it is, right? It, it never uh, never is a status quo kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah but but I mean, I, I like I said, I had a lot of fun about ten plus years doing it. Um, my car was lucky to be featured in um, one of the Mustang magazines twice for uh, Mustang Week, which is going on right now in Myrtle Beach. It's one of the biggest gatherings um, for Mustangs of uh, any and all years. And I won um, top 50 in that one, top 150 in that, which is very hard. I won it one year. I was on staff a few years judging. I, and I've been to a few other big, big events where I've gotten um, nice trophies. And you know, well, even though some of us car guys now who are now married and have kids, you know, we're all like, hey, we should all get together. And it's it's just hard now because once you get that family and, you, you know, you're no longer single, it's like trying to fit it in to fit in the go and, one, when your car is not running, you really don't want to go hang out with all your car buddies. It, you know, they're going to be there in their cars because some of us, there still runs or there's still, or they got extra car they can take. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's just different. Mm-hmm. Now, have you ever looked into the, like the car racing sports? Yes. Uh, actually, when I had my Mustang, you know, everybody was like drag racing, drag racing. I was like, nah, I don't, straight lines. Okay. I mean, I, I raced down the drag strip a few times. It was fun. But me, I, I like road racing, you know, taking it up in the mountains, you know, let's put it on an auto, auto course and let's see what we can, how we can handle the turns. Uh, that's what I set mine up originally to do was, was to road race or to, to go up in the mountains and take turns real tight. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, that's pretty cool. I have a couple buddies actually through shooting who used to, you know, they did the street courses, well, not street courses, but yeah. They'd put it on a track and they'd be racing on the track, and that was always kind of fun to hear when they talked about that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah I mean, going in a straight line is fun, but it's like it's like you're there and then it's then you're done. Okay, you're like, okay, now I got to go wait back in line for my next turn. But if you're on an auto course, then you got a longer you got got a longer time you can go have fun. Especially if you go to like Road Atlanta down here allows uh, a few times a year people to come out there, pay a fee, and you can actually take your car on the Road Atlanta track. Um, I've driven my car around Charlotte Motor Speedway, around their track, um, and actually the whole entire speedway plus their road course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, do you ever wish you could get back into racing as more of a primary hobby? No, not with what fuel and everything is today and parts. <laughs> <Right. Mm-mm>, no. <laughs> yeah, that yeah that could be a uh, that could be a uh, yeah super expensive at this point nowadays. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, all right, Doug, I'm getting near the end of my questions list for you, but I do still have a couple more for you. Um, so when you were coming into the sport, who were some of your biggest mentors um, into the sport? I really didn't have any until after I've been shooting for about a year and made connections with people. And one of my good friends who um, yeah, he runs um, – he runs. I have. I'm gonna butcher the name of his company, and that's sad because I'm seeing his logo and I can't even say it. Uh, Shooting Sports Innovations. Um, Nathan Carter. Uh, he's not too far up the road from me, and uh, you know he's a single stack guy like me, but he also shoots other divisions. Uh, whenever he says he's coming down to shoot, I'd always would squad with him, and he would always you know help me out with things. And like I said, I used to have a buddy who no longer shoots. If it was a weekend and there was a match, me and him were going shooting we'd feed off each other like hey because he was shooting an open gun and i was shooting carry optics so we would kind of game off each other see you know like all right let's see how fast you can do the stage versus me and but uh you know nathan um tyler since he's moved here from uh commie florida uh i mean commie uh, california uh 
he's he's been a real good friend. Uh, him and I do a uh, um, you know if, if I'm shooting with him, you know, I'll, he'll kind of give me a little bit of pointers here and there. You know, he won't give me too much of his info because he likes to keep his uh, his his speed mm-hmm. in check. It's, it's if you ever get a chance to see Tyler shoot in person, you're gonna your draw will probably drop to four. I will never forget the first time I saw him shoot at a match. I was like, wait a minute, how fast did he do that? How many alphas did he get? He ain't got no mics. Is he human? <laughs> but you know, it's, it's him. And I got I got a buddy Ivan and my um, good friend Chris. Uh, you know, we all if if normally if if it's a Saturday and there's room on their squad, we'll all shoot together. But there's a lot of guys I shoot with. You know, that and also from North Carolina. I like from the guys that have, I think they've done some stuff. You uh, make stuff better. I think that's their. Mm-hmm. I think that's them, the wolves and stuff. I'll shoot with them from time to time. They're, they're fun. They're fun to shoot with. We'll, we'll feed off each other. We'll give people pointers, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, um, have you had like an aha moment in your shooting, like something that just dramatically changed um, how you kind of think about shooting? Maybe when I was with Tom, uh, actually with Tom, and, and you know, just him pointing stuff out that maybe people weren't seeing because. He basically watched me shoot his stage that he had set up, and he was like, "Here's what I saw." And he actually went through and showed me my movements. And he was like, "Here, I want you here." And he's like, "Now watch me shoot it." And I watched him shoot it. He's like, "Now you copy that." And I copied it. And he was like, "You see how much better it is?" I was like, "Yep." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, I can. He's definitely a good coach. That's that's for sure. But um, yeah, I thought about I thought about doing his online. Um, courses that he offers, you know, the, the online, I've, I've really been looking into that here lately. Mm-hmm. I would say it's good. It's definitely a self-driven thing, um, as well. So it's like you get as much out of that as, uh, you can put into it yourself. So it's kind of one of those, you know, other than monetary, it's, uh, it's a time commitment to, uh, to be able to actually anal, you know, analyze a bunch of stuff onto there and, um, put it in your own shooting. But, um, I guess, oh, is, uh, Oh, I guess. Other than Rudy Project, do you have any other sponsors, or are they all related through Rudy Project? If so, uh, go ahead and share them. Uh, well, of course, we got Rudy. We got Red Hill, uh, Red Hill Tactical, Seymour, Lima Cat, uh, 3M. There's so many to name. Uh, we, kept, we hit with some new ones this year, uh, Black uh, Bullets International. Uh, I think we got, last time I counted, I think it's 12 or 15. 15 brands we represent and, and we, we, we try to push their products um, you know like you know everybody's like well they're just you know mainly what Rudy is known for is their, their sports glasses for people that do bicycles and they do helmets things like that but they also have active wear glasses you know like just regular everyday glasses and you know we have shooting glasses and things like that so. gotcha no yeah, that's cool and it's good that they uh, help support the, the team uh, and yourself I don't know what's going on today, but anyway, yeah. But uh, Doug, if somebody actually wanted to get a hold of you, you know, talk about shooting or meeting up at a match or whatever, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Either on Facebook, uh, Doug Lawson, you can't miss me. Uh, it's a picture of me uh, shooting my single stack gun, or uh, same pictures on Instagram. It's um, uh, at Snowman O three GT all lowercase is my Instagram handle. They can just hit me up on there, and it's probably the best way to get me. Well, that's awesome, yeah. And so, if you guys, if you guys want to talk to my buddy Doug, go ahead and uh, check him out um, where he said below because I already forgot since I don't have to worry about that. But um, no, Doug, brother, thank you for coming on. It's been a blast for me. So, thank you for uh, sharing your evening with me and finally getting this recorded. Oh yeah, it was fun. Appreciate it. No problem. And to and the listeners, until next time, get out and do things, and I will see you on the next one. <laughs>